Hi, I'm Matt Evans, Superintendent of the Monticello Central School District, and thank you for joining me for the November 27th, 2023 edition of It's Monday in Monticello. Today, I'd like to take a few moments to uh, give you a high-level overview of our website. As we enter the holiday season, a lot of our uh, upcoming events are listed on the calendar there, and we also have reminders on how uh, parents, caregivers, students, and other end users can, can contact our schools or be notified of uh, emergency closures or delays. So first, uh, one would go to our website, that is www.monticelloschools.net, and you'll land on our homepage. And there's a lot going on on our homepage, as there's a lot going on in our district. We have six different schools. We have approximately 2,600 students, uh, a little over uh, 600 full-time staff members. So there's a lot to this. So I guess I would start off start off by recommending to end users that uh, if your child goes to a particular school in the district, to click on the link of that school. So let's say your child goes to the Robert J. Kaiser Middle School. Uh, you would click on here on this uh, link to the middle school. It'll take you to the middle school's homepage. And this is probably the easiest way to navigate, again, if you're a parent of a student in the district, and that's by the particular school. There'll be some customized uh, events here for uh, RJK uh, parents and caregivers and uh, students and staff on the right-hand side, some news events about what's going on uh, at the middle school and throughout the district, and then some other important links about the school, uh, schedule, remote schedules, uh, code of conduct, uh, and other uh, things going on in the school. Also uh, important to know on each school's uh, homepage is a uh, the email address of the school's principal. So in this case, it's rjkprincipal at k12mcsd.net, as well as the phone number uh, to the school's main office. So again, uh, if you're a parent or a caregiver, it's probably uh, easiest to go through a particular school's webpage. Now, uh, in terms of upcoming events throughout the district, I'd recommend the calendar link, which can when, which can be found here in the top right of our uh, webpage, our homepage. If you click on calendar, there'll be kind of this day by day linear calendar uh, going from you know now November into December. One can also click on one of these links over here on the right. So there's a district calendar. Uh, and there's different calendars by school. So let's say uh, your child goes to the Cook Elementary School. If you click on that link, you can find out upcoming events at, in this case, the Cook Elementary School. There are some health screenings. There's a retake day. If we go into December, we can see the Cook Winter Concert dates. So uh, those links are very useful, again, for particular schools. Another important feature on our website is uh, a link to contact us. Uh, we do not want uh, anyone to sit out there uh, wondering about how their kids are doing or if they heard something going on uh, or they have a concern or a complaint or questions about a school or a particular department or the district. So by clicking on contact us, the end user comes to this page and we've developed this useful resource, a PDF document, about whom do I contact with questions about particular issues. So let's say uh, you have a question about your child's uh, academics. So the first point of contact for you as a parent or caregiver about your child's academics would be their teacher. And the reason it'd be their teacher is because your child's teacher knows them best, they are the ones who regularly uh, meet with your child, they assess your child, they review their child's work, they can talk to you about how your child performs in class. So any questions or concerns you might have, you would start with the teacher. Now, if it can't be resolved at that level, uh, then uh, you would go to either your child's guidance counselor in the middle school or the high school, or their assistant principal if your child is in an elementary school. If your questions or concerns can't be addressed at that level, then it goes up to the principal. And again, if not at that level, then the assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction. And again, if not at that level, then the superintendent. And finally, if not with me, uh, then the board of education. The reason we do this is because we want to get your answers and concerns resolved as quickly as possible. And we feel in the example I gave that the teacher uh, is the best resource uh, for you relative to your child's academics. Uh, that rings true across different parts of the organization. Uh, so whether that be transportation or food service, athletics, it would be their, their coach, 
uh, before or after school, you would contact uh, the Healthy Kids site supervisor and so on. And again, we wanna resolve and answer your question as quickly as possible. Now, it being uh, the, the winter, we're entering our winter sports season. Uh, and I shared with you before about the calendar where one can find a lot of our extracurricular activities, whether those be concerts uh, or the drama production at the high school or the Nutcracker uh, performance at the high school and so forth. But if your child plays a particular winter sport and you want to find out their uh, game and meet schedule, you'd click on Athletics, PE, and Health. And this would take you to our homepage for athletics, phys ed, and health. And you would click on athletics calendar on the right-hand side. And this, again, will take you to uh, kind of a day-by-day -day linear calendar uh, of our athletic events that are going on. Now, it does not include practice schedules, those you would need to get from your child's coach. However, it does include scrimmages, meets, and games. So, for example, today at 5 o'clock, our boys' uh, JV basketball team will be playing other schools uh, in a scrimmage at the high school. That's not open to the public. Those are just uh, scrimmages that are going on amongst JV boys' basketball teams. However, later this week, the boys' JV team has its first game uh, against Liberty, and that is at the high school at 4.45 p.m. Uh, and then uh, later this week, on uh, Friday and Saturday, the boys' teams are playing in a tournament down in Wallenpawpak. Uh, and you can see there's a link here uh, to live streaming of uh, the Friday games. And then uh, that uh, will depend, the Saturday games will depend on the outcomes of the Friday games. So you can do this by week. You can do it by month. Um, you can go forward in the schedule um, uh, to see what's going on uh, with different teams. I also want to share some other important resources about our website with you. Uh, again, going back to our homepage. Uh, if, you know, I shared with you the contact us information, but let's say that uh, you receive word of uh, bullying or harassment of a student, or that there is some school level threat or a, a threat to a particular student or staff member. Uh, first, we would recommend that you contact the school's main office and speak with an administrator. Uh, if that's not available uh, and you'd rather do it anonymously, you can click on this report it, report bullying online being via anonymous alerts. It'll take you to this page. You can enter uh, the location of the school, where in the school, and then you can report the incident here, a narrative. You can even upload a picture or a screenshot if it was uh, you know, some, something done online, for example. Now, a couple things with this I want to remind you of. First, we only monitor this between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, on days when school is open. So if schools are closed, uh, we would recommend that you contact either law enforcement or if it's an emergency, 911. Uh, if you contact either of those channels uh, and it's something, let's say it's a, a school-related threat, they will be in contact with us and we'll take appropriate uh, steps from there. But if you want to leave an anonymous report uh, about bullying or harassment in school or even something that might be going on outside of school that you think we need to know about and you want to do it anonymously, you can do so here on our Report It tab. So uh, finally, just to go back to our homepage, if you are a parent or a caregiver and you want to receive emergency notifications about uh, closures, delays, early dismissals, uh, you want to, uh, we recommend that you sign up for our Parent Square app. And again, you go to our homepage, you scroll down to the bottom to connect, and you click on Parent Square. And there's information in here on how one can download the app. You don't need to be a parent or caregiver. You can also, um, you know, if you just want to keep informed about events going on at the school, you can sign up for email notifications. Uh, you can download the app through these links. Or if you're on a PC and you want to download it directly to your uh, mobile device, you can scan either of these QR codes and it will take you there. So as we enter the winter uh, and the possibilities of emergency closures and delays increases, I highly recommend that uh, you, you have the Parent Square app. So that's it for a high-level tutorial of our website. There's a lot here, uh, but again, feel free to, to noodle around in it as you see fit. Um, now, just a reminder that uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, November 28th, I will be holding another open office hours session. Uh, this is open to any community member from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. It's done uh, remotely via Zoom. I'll be online at this web link on Zoom from, again, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., and we've also scheduled them further out into December and January as well. 
Now, keep in mind that this is a Zoom meeting, so uh, I really uh, recognize uh, the confidentiality and the opportunities to dialogue directly with individuals. So I really only host one person at a time. If you are unable to wait in the waiting room, uh, please feel free to shoot me an email uh, and uh, someone will get back in touch with you relative to your question. But uh, I enjoyed uh, the session we had a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking forward to this next session. And if you notice, we are alternating the uh, times to hopefully meet people's different schedules throughout the district. So that's it for this week. Thank you for this extended edition of It's Monday in Monticello. But we wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of these useful resources when planning uh, events and other activities uh, that uh, happen throughout our district uh, during this holiday season. I hope all of you stay well, stay warm. With Monty Pride, I'm Matt Evans.